comment the other day. In fact, I get this comment fairly regularly, and that is, am I still enthusiastic about the Thunder Laser and what I thought about it? Well, this is my Thunder Laser Nova 35 100 watt, and I've on this for two years and one month actually and the long and short of it is yes I am still very enthusiastic about this laser the only competitor with this laser is a Kern and a Kern laser can be nearly double the price and you're not getting any better quality or reliability these just <laughs> they're just high quality and they have very very high reliability and they're made to turn out work on my channel there's 35 videos devoted to this laser uh, that i've put into a a playlist for you so uh, we'll have a, a browse through that. In actual fact, um, starting this week, uh, because I've had so many new starts and so many fundamental questions asked about uh, laser work in general, whether it be CO2 or the fiber laser on the back there, um, I'm going to start a bit of a course on both lasers. So to keep the Thunder Laser running reliably, you just need to keep it clean, dust free as much as you can, um, you know, clean the rails, and I, I do mine with uh, White Spirit to take off any residue from, especially working with wood. Um, and the mirrors, you keep the mirrors uh, clean. I check them every time I, I use the machine, which is most days. <laughs> the first thing I do is to clean the mirrors. Um, there again, especially when you're working with uh, man-made wood, such as uh, MDF. MDF is probably the worst, actually. Um, that will leave a film on your uh, mirrors after prolonged use um, cutting or etching so keep your mirrors clean and that in turn keeps all the power levels up in other words you, you get less loss as the laser is bounced around the machine through the mirrors uh, so that's what you're after minimal loss the um, honeycomb bed now i steam clean mine uh once every oh, i suppose fortnight something like that you steam clean it and it keeps it looking as you know brand new because there again the honeycomb the residue from cutting or etching um, collects on the honeycomb as well um, I have a pure air filtration system over there, which, uh, which I got from Thunder Laser as well. And um, I just, uh, once a month, blow the filters out and uh, it just, just does the job. Um, no problems whatsoever runs quietly and the cooler standard cooler from thunder laser no problem never really never have to service that uh maybe blow it off every now and again um but apart from that no i do change the water every year um i use distilled water and i put half a cup of bleach in actually that if there is any microbes all right uh in the system anywhere you know they they're dead 
they don't multiply. So you don't, the, so you don't get any build up inside the tube of anything. It's perfectly clean. Uh, whatever you do, do not put antifreeze in your coolant system. That's defeating the object. <laughs> Okay, you want everything to be clear and transparent. I suppose an alcohol mixture, you could use that. Uh, but you'd need to speak to the supplier of your tube or machine um, you know, to, to verify that. Or they may have... A chemical additive themselves um, I don't know but it's just what I do um, other than that you know you keep it serviced uh, you know yourself no problem at all um, turnkey you know switch it on put whatever information into it whatever job you want and off it goes uh, personally speaking, I have never had one moment's problem with the laser. Uh, if anything has gone amiss, it's been my fault in the programming. And, you know, no fault of the machinery then. Okay, or the, or the program. Um... Can I recommend these? Absolutely. You know, if you want, um, how can I put this? How can I put this so you understand a little better? Okay. My personal preference, right? And if someone was asking me for my advice of what I would do or where I would buy a machine from um, obviously I'd go to Thunder Laser or Kern if you want a professional machine if you want to start a your own business if you want to teach yourself how to use a laser don't go wasting six grand on a 100 watt laser that you can buy on eBay because they are just not worth it. They are put together. I, look, I've been in the factories in China and I can tell you now that the staff that they use to mechanically put them together and uh, to wire up they pull straight off the blemish off the, the streets or straight out of the out of the, the farmer's field and they're paid peanuts and they showed this goes here this goes here by someone who may know something about it they are not put together by professional people. They're put together by basically farmers or farm hands. Because that's what it's like in China. This company used professional engineers to put these together. And, well, to design them first and put them together. And not only that, it is European and American standards and there are Europeans and Americans at the top guiding the development and the manufacturing process of these machines. That's why I got one. So long and short of it how do i feel about my thunder laser 
I feel a bit the same as the day that I I got it and brought it in and, and unpacked it. It's 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 the business. Don't my personal view, don't go wasting your money on buying something from eBay because basically they're crap. <laughs> and if you're going to if you if you want to teach yourself and you want to find out if you want to or whether you feel you want to start a business up or a, a serious hobby by CO2 you know with a CO2 laser go and get yourself a K40 I've got a K40 I've got videos on K40 and how to set them up, how to use them. Okay? They're a 40 watt laser, CO2, and you can buy them for under $500. You know? Um, yes, they are eBay. And they're made by a number of different factories. And um, you'll see. It, it, it's best you go and have a look at my K40 videos and you see that when I when I got mine, which I still have, uh, I virtually had to rewire it to make it safe. Remember what I said about some of the factories, most of the factories in China? They are put together by, should we say, non-professional staff. Okay? That's the nice way of putting it. <laughs> uh, so I virtually rebuilt mine and made it into something half decent. Well, that is where you start with a laser. Then when you get reasonably confident that, yes, I like this, I can really do something with this, then you go for, you know, the... A decent size laser. I use the 100 watt uh, Nova 35, which is identical size to my previous 100, 100 watt laser. Um, obviously, this is a couple of steps up from that. Um, but you know, you don't have to leap straight into the Nova 35, there's a Nova 25 as well, which is a very useful tool. So until the next video on lasers, which will be in a few days, it's bye for now.